ओम श्री साई राम गीतावाहिनी चैप्टर 19 मिस इंटरप्रिटेशंस ऑफ द गीता द वर्स आई शैल बियर द बर्डन ऑफ योर वेलफेयर स्पीकर्स हु आर आउट टू स्प्रेड द गीता हैव मल्टीप्लाइड नवडेज एंड एज ए कॉन्सिक्वेंस ए वैरायटी ऑफ इंटरप्रिटेशंस मोस्ट ऑफ देम फॉर रिमूव्ड फ्रॉम द जेन्युइन वन have emanated clouding the true significance of the genuine one interpretations follow the nature and character of the exponent once one forms an opinion one tries to buttress it with appropriate arguments and prove others wrong the opinion is then repeated parrot like on every occasion no attempt is made to practice the gita and make it part of its of one's actual life such people pretend to be great geeta preachers and go about heavy with the burden of credentials and titles they ruin themselves by this deception and undermine the trust placed on the geeta each word of god is for translation into actual life not for scattering into ears of people to reap fame but the times have gone so every that today the words are misused for acquiring publicity and praise those who listen to the expositions of these preachers are also neglecting to question the bona fides they don't care to examine whether the people who extol the gita to the skies have tasted the sweetness of its teachings words and deeds are far apart the teachers extort others but those who are exhorted find that the teacher themselves don't follow the lesson no not even one in a million some boast that they have the entire gita on the tip of their tongue that they can roll out on the spot any verse from the gita that you want to hear given only the chapter and number or they can quote chapter and number for any phrase or word you give i am inclined to laugh when such scholarship is exhibited poor tongue that it should carry so much on its tip trip tip without any of it being absorbed in actual life a ground phone record can repeat as well as they can and with equal benefit to itself practicing one verse certainly yields more benefit than learning all the verses by rote and retaining them in memory arjuna proved every word of krishna true by practicing it his sincerity won him the grace of krishna it is a pity that even extremely learned pundits at the present time are unaware of the thrill of putting into practice a single word of the gita what then are we to say of the unlearned the ignorant in short even some very reputed exponents of the gita are playing false to his teaching acting contrary to the message to the song of the lord each one adds a fancy note of their own to demonstrate their special twist in scholarship or their favorite pre dilection let us consider one example of this type the 10th verse of the chapter 6 of the gita declares that accepting help from others parigraha is a great sin now those who accept the gita as authority should act accordingly avoiding help right parigraha means accepting even for the upkeep of the body and maintenance of dharma these preachers however do accept 99% of them the condemnation of accepting help applies to all forms there are no modifying circumstances or exceptions it collections and contributions are asked for parigraha sacrifices as an offering during waving of lights in a ritual worship as expenses for the community of parigraha preachers 
as gifts for the guru tickets are sold for lectures just as for entertainment like the drama and cinema people who do this have no faith in the words of krishna for had they faith they would not have behaved in such contrary ways if they were convinced that it is wrong they would not be tempted to act so they explain the verse and feel that their duty is done they don't feel the need to follow the advice that is the spirit of the time for this is a age of hypocrisy people who watch this type of geeta preaching lose faith first in the preacher and later in the geeta itself the publicity dissolves into mere pomp and vanity the teachings of the geeta don't get the respect that the book gets thousands of people when they see the sacred books the geeta ramayana bhagavata bharata etc bow their heads press them to their eyes place them on their heads keep them on a special seat in the shrine and reverentially place a few flowers on them they sit with closed eyes and with their with the tear drops rolling down their cheeks fall prostrate before the book and raise very much satisfied with themselves all that reverence is for the stake of paper not for the contents of the books the subjects they deal with the head must carry not the weight of the paper but the message explained thereon attach value not to the book but to the subject revere not the volume but the matter expounded therein install it not on the altar but in the heart for it is only then the authority of the geeta will be honored steadily at all times the mind won't be cleansed of egotism or like evils by all this unward reverence learning by rote offering worship in shrine rooms holding the head pressing on the eyes etc let the message enter the heart put it into practice and taste the joy that comes from it that is the way to honor the geeta the tastiest dish can never quell your hunger if you place it on the head or press it to your eye or fall prostrate before it the geeta is on a par with this the geeta is a tasty dish full of the sweet ingredients of devotion wisdom action karma and attachment eat it drink it one mouthful is enough the angry one does not need all the grain that is harvested a handful of rice suffices the thirsty one need not drink the godavari dry a glass of water is enough he who has hunger for god need not consume the entire geeta it can be quenched by practicing even one verse a box of matches has many sticks if you want to light a fire you need to stick only one you can nurture the the little flame into a huge fire with care and diligence the entire stock of sticks need not be struck there are 700 sticks in the geeta each one is a stick from which you can light the flame of wisdom jnana strike one on the stone of experience that is enough the geeta has to be used thus for self realization that is a holy task for which it is designed it is a great wrong to misuse it all attempts to use it for the fame and fortune for titles and display or but symptoms of egotism their acts of sacrilege the fragrance ganda must be extracted from this book grantha that is the test of scholarship the fragrance is the essence of the book do not on the other hand transform the brain mastaka into a pustaka book see god in the stone do not change god into a stone that is the desirable vision the stone must be visualized as divine suffused with god which it really is this vision is the precious gift that god has given the people of this land pearls don't float on the waves of the ocean so dive deep into the silent 
caverns of the bottom if you earn for them the people of this land have sought for god in this manner for ages the practice of dharma is the body the realization of god is its heart this is the truth that has urged the people here to march forward and save themselves they are not slaves to outward polish external embroidery or material comfort they search for the basic atma with the inner eye and cultivate detachment however the people of india bharat who have this grand nature or attracted today by material progress and outward form this tragedy is much to be regretted those who go about expounding the gita with the object of earning money or thereby keeping god afar they may give various justifications for their behavior no doubt but no one who has real faith in the gita or who is a real adherent of its teaching can accept their explanations the gita is spoken in order to foster dharma not valued positions dhanam it serves to promote goodness not good goodness collecting money in the name of the temple for krishna or rama or for a temple for the gita is another means of reducing faith in god building a house for the lord who is immanent and all pervading is absurd the heart is the proper temple where krishna or the gita is to be installed to put up an artificial structure which is certain to be ravaged by time for the eternal absolute the indestructible godhead is a very improper of course until a stage is reached these may be necessary but in that case it is wiser to make the best use of the ancient temples that already exist building a new ones and ruining the old ones is as foolish as killing the cow and donating footwear made out of its hide the welfare of the world can never be promoted by renovating old temples the welfare of the world can be promoted by renovating old temples not by creating new ones the installation of god in ancient days was done according to strict scriptural ritual so the old temples are holier the power radiated from them confers upon this land what little welfare it now enjoys the sages of the past suffered hardships detached themselves from the world and even disintegrated their physics physicius in the search for the secrets of individual salvation and social uplift they have handed down certain codes of conduct and rules of living that are practicable and simple even these are now neglected or misunderstood new codes and rules are imposed so these precious ones have gone under when elders gurus and pandits have ac- accept and honor these new fangled modes of behavior how can india continue to be the abode of righteousness dharma kshetra the abode of yoga yoga kshetra and the abode of surrender tyaga kshetra this downfall in ideals explain why the land that verily was a bestower of food annapurna feeding all her children has to wail today for food the holy experience i am shiva shivoham was resounding from every mountain valley every cave every temple and every sacred river bank but now the cry is i am dead sauhom the land has lost its ancient joy it is infested with anxiety it is the home of self aggrandizement it is pursuing empty pomp to counteract these tendencies the spread of spiritual knowledge by people who have actually experienced the joy of spiritual discipline and success in and through it has become very necessary everyone from the simple unlettered person to the realized sage paramahamsa must recognize this need all must cultivate faith in the gita and take it as the authentic word of the lord the lord has given 
the assurance i shall bear the burden of your welfare here and year after yoga shimam vaham yahum he has undertaken this task voluntarily but for mortals and aspirants to benefit from this they have to live as ordained they have to adhere to the lines laid down when they feel that they are not so helped they have only to examine their own lives and discover how far they have kept up commands of god regarding the regulation of life they fail to examine this they don't consider the past and future they complain about the grief of the moment not knowing that it is caused by neglect in the past and the ignorance of the future that is the root of their suffering while considering this assurance the condition contained in the same verse for those devotees who worship me alone ananya sintayanto mam ye janaha paripashate has to be remembered i shall bear the burden of your welfare here and year after is the crown of this condition the final fruit the assurance is the head but no head can function independently of of limbs holding fast only to the head apart from neck and shoulders and the rest of the body is like putting faith in the key in one's hand after the iron safe has been stolen of what use the key after the treasure is burgled the conditions for the fulfillment of that assurance are meditation on the lord unhampered by any other thought ananya chinta and steady worship upasana if unbroken meditation is absent when worship is not offered with unconditional surrender what justification is there to complain that he is not bearing the burden you surrender to others you praise and extol others you are immersed in other thoughts how then can he assume the burden you serve others and press the lord for reward how can this be undivided loyalty ananya chinta the servant of the king must serve the king wholeheartedly if the servant serves the king and loves his family it cannot be termed un swearing loyalty sir whom you love love whom you sir that is the secret of surrender sharanagati vyasa made a lovely girl garland using the words of krishna as flowers of that garland garland this verse is the crest it is the central jewel of that garland of gems the words yoga and shema used by the lord here mean acquisition of something desirable and preservation of what is thus acquired the discipline by which you can preserve it is exclusive meditation on the lord ananya chinta that will cleanse the mind it will make you a devotee devotees are recognized by these things they talk of the lord they sing of the lord they see only the lord they work and spend their leisure with the lord such people have no need to perform rituals or other sacrifices they need not busy themselves with meritorious acts of charity or go from one holy place to another why should they be sad if they miss these things or complain that the lord did not give them the chance or the wherewithal for these he does not insist on these or crave these offer whatever arises in the mind made pure by spiritual discipline he gladly accepts all you may engage yourselves in what are termed good deeds but if the mind is unclean if the vessel is not tinged with the thought of god they are all polluted into poison he is particular that the vessel be clean note how the handful of parched rice that Kuchela offered the Lord with a pure mind, pleased him. Read the experiences of Vidura and Draupadi in the epics, Puranas. What did they offer the Lord? Vidura gave a cup of gruel. Draupadi had only a wee of bit of leaf to offer. On the face of it, they are valueless, unable to fetch even half a penny as price. But consider... 
how much the lord gave in return he does not calculate the value of things he calculates the feeling that prompted the act so purify the feeling in order to win his grace jai sai ram